All right. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for coming to the CMU International Film Festival's live discussion event for Corpus Christi. My name is Patrick Stanny, and I'm a first year MEIM student at Heinz College, and I will be helping to facilitate today's discussion. Before we begin, we got a couple housekeeping notes. Um, Today's event is being recorded and by joining us, you are agreeing to have your participation recorded as we will have this video posted to our website for future reference. To make sure this event functions smoothly, all of your microphones will be muted throughout the discussion. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function on the bottom bar of the screen. For those unfamiliar with Zoom, you can find this by clicking on the participant tab. You can also write comments using the chat functions also located at the bottom of your screen. We'll have a Q&A at the end where you can ask questions and provide comments. To keep things fluid, we ask that you hold off on questions until then. Again, you may use the raise hand function and I will then unmute you and the floor will be yours. If you prefer not to speak, please write a question in the chat box at that time and I, I will ask the question on your behalf. Today's event is organized in conjunction with Row House Cinema. The Corpus Christi screening and event are supported by the Humanities Scholar Program, CMU's Graduate Student Assembly, the Polish Cultural Institute of New York, the Department of Slavic Languages and Literature at the University of Pittsburgh, and the Polish Falcons of America. I would now like to introduce you to tonight's moderator, Dr. Patric Patricia Donahue adjunct professor of psychology and religious studies at Chatham University. And now I would love to introduce our guest speaker, Jan Komasa. Born in 1981 in Poland, Jan Komasa grew up in a family of musicians and actors and became an actor himself at a young age. After witnessing the making of Schindler's List, he decided to pursue film directing and graduated from the National Film School of Poland. His debut short film, Nice to See You, came third in competition for the Cine Fondazione Award at the 2004 Cannes Film Festival. He gained further acclaim for his first two features, Suicide Room in 2011 and Warsaw 44 in 2014. His film Corpus Christi was nominated at the 2020 Academy Awards for Best International Feature Film. It was awarded the European Cinema Label as Best European Film at the Giornati Degli Autori in the 2019 Venice Film Festival. Welcome, Jan. Hey, Patrick. hello, Patrick. everybody. Thank you for the introduction, Patrick. Hello, happy, happy to be with you guys. Thank could you, you for please, inviting Patrick, me. Jan, uh, Jan, could you say what time is in Poland right now? Oh, at the moment, it's pretty early. It's 1 a.m., so don't worry. Oh, my God. We are so grateful to have you here at <laughs> no, it's fine. 1 a.m. I'm a night walker. <laughs> I, don't, I don't sleep at all. Don't worry. It's... <laughs> Thank you so much. So... It's great to be with you guys. Um, thank you for inviting me, and it's it's um, it's it's great to to. It was like, when was it? It was 2019 when we premiered Corpus Christi, and now it's 2021, and it's still for some people at least. It seems it's still relevant, so it's great. Right, <laughs> time just stopped. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Jan, first, I, I want to just thank you for, for making this film. Uh, it's beautiful. It's devastating. Um, so, so affecting. Um, and so I just am grateful for your, for your work. Um, really, um, has really impacted me. Um, I thought maybe to start the discussion, um, you, you mentioned in your, your intro for the festival about you know, um, Daniel's face. And there's no doubt that, you know, his face dominates the film and it's an extraordinary, extraordinary face. Um, his, his vulnerability, his beauty um, and his emotional range. Uh, it was just extraordinary to watch him move from, you know, um, terror and fear to, to uh, joy, to sadness, to compassion. Um, so I was wondering if maybe to start, if you would talk a little bit about your relationship with um, Bartosz, um, how you chose him uh, for the role, how you found him, um, and whether once, once you began to work together, 
the the way in which he maybe changed the role or because it struck me that you know if it were another actor it would be another film oh, totally thank you patricia for your kindest of words uh, at the beginning and um in terms of yeah faces and barter well he has an amazing face himself so yeah. it was pretty easy it was an e easy, easy shot for me to just put the camera right there and watch his face from the closest distance but to be honest that wasn't the plan i was planning on making a film more about like more of this this documentary ha camera handheld style in in which you know we're close to the actor the actor can go this way that way and we always follow the actor it's pretty it's really sort of like le prophet the french film uh the prophet uh from uh, from a few years ago and and um, or son of saul uh, the other film tremendous one and um, so that's why I was, you know, during the auditioning process, it was it always lasts for a long, like a long time with me. I'm, I'm very, you know, careful and sort of collecting the cast and trying to match the chemi chemistry of the actors so it matches and then we can, we can roll when, when I'm ready with this. I don't want to rush it too much. I have to spend uh, dwell on it a little bit. So <clears throat> with Bartosz, it was, he's pretty well known in Poland in terms of um, theater and for theater goers on stage, he performs beautifully. His face is amazing. He's, you know, he's, it works on stage definitely. For film, not so much so because he was most, he's probably too characteristic and filmmakers were sort of afraid of taking him and hiring in, in, in movies. And mostly he was, uh, he was chosen, um, he, he was selected to play villains, cuckoos and crazy people. <laughs> so, uh, and usually secondary roles. Um, but everybody talked about his amazing skills on stage and theater. And people were sort of reluctant and, and, and un anxious, sort of mostly anxious, asking Bartosz, when will be your breakthrough role in cinema? <laughs> and when will that be? And years pass and, and he came to the audition. And my sort of auditioning process with Corpus, every time I, I'm, I'm trying to um, um, curate it to fit the film. So here knowing we have at least two um, worlds that collide. One world is world of faith and the other one, world of faith and church and reflection. The other one is the tough street life, you know, streetwise uh, world of juvenile detention center. So obviously I came up with two different scenes for all the actors and I gave them both to perform in front of, in front of the camera. And one scene was to, uh, to, to try to, in their own words, to perform a mass, improvise, and then sing a psalm or a, a, a religious song, whatever the, they like. I wanted to hear their voice. I wanted to know if they have the power of convincing anybody into any uh, like um, deeper value of, of, of sort. And that was one scene. And the other scene was, you know, to perform, to be this streetwise character, to express anger towards the camera as if the, the camera was a friend who turned them in at the police station. And they had to, in the most dramatic way, they had to express what they felt about it, being betrayed by them, by you, by the camera. So, and, you know, you're like over two, two months, 250 male actors came and and um, they were already selected from self tapes and and so that was already a selection of actors and 250 uh, 50 actors came and was funny because um as an experiment maybe half of them was great as streetwise characters and half of them the other half was great being fake priests, I mean, pretending priests. 
and I was, you know, initial, my initial goal was very simple to find somebody who would embody perfectly the two of, um, of them, of those roles. And Bartosz came <laughs> and he was an exception from the beginning because he wasn't good at neither. <laughs> 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 it was, yeah. but it was only be because and he actually made me realize this it was only because he understood that this character isn't a priest and isn't a criminal because being a criminal is also a social role mm -hmm. and he was somebody else mm -hmm. and thanks to it and he was the only one he was <laughs> not following my sort of requests or anything like this he came in independently with his thinking and I love this and I told my producer I would love Bartosz to to, to be the, the, to, to go with Bartosz and they were they were scared <laughs> <So it's no. laughs> to, be, to say the least because he had long he he, he was uh, he had long hair, long hair. blonde long skinny. hair he was very skinny he had this long too long sweater you know he was he's like a on, on daily but he would kill me for it but it's one <laughs> so he's probably asleep maybe he's not um he it's he was uh he he's a like a super extreme orthodox echo hipster he came with his dog <laughs> on his bike you know he was all that and suddenly this guy yeah. becoming a, a, you know a villain a, a, a criminal <laughs> streetwise character so my my producer said no 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 it's because you know we had this other character this other actor um uh, pincher the, the the actor playing pincher in the film mm -hmm. his name is Tomasz Tomas Gentek he is the star in Poland. And he was our main choice for the main character. Um, and he was a safe choice because we knew with, you know, he would be a great, as you saw on the screen, he would be this great streetwise character. But at the same time, I wasn't sure about whether he's able to convince me into any of deeper values, uh, let's say, when he would perform masses, etc. It would be a different film with a handheld camera. So. Sorry for my long digression, but sort of coming back to, to your initial question about the face of the main character. Once I knew it's Bartosz and once I, I, I had a green light from my producers, I decided to put the camera still and observe his face, not to enhance the performance of the actor with the movements of the camera, because then it will be like, a, you know, it, it's the same through the same sort of like it's always to have a contradiction in the storytelling so if you have a, an actor who has his face being so telling i just made the camera still and i was working on the pacing and on the staging and just be like i trusted his eyes and i i decided to be as close as, as possible yeah I, I, as you're describing that i realized that part of the impact of, of watching him is because the camera is still. Like I didn't realize that till you said that now. And it's part of the power of, of watching him um, and you know being in the position of the viewer. Like it, and it's hard exactly to locate ourselves uh, within the story, right? So I, I realized that it's the stillness of the camera that was really Really Pat Patricia, as, uh, except for the two sequences, the opening sequence and the closing, right? Yeah, that's that's totally right. Like it's the it's like sort of it's the bridge. It's the it's um, a coda for the film in which we open this the film in the, mo the with the handheld camera and we close it the same way, um, sort of to to go full circle three three sixty. Wow um with the journey yeah well that sort of leads to a, another question i wanted to I've, that i've been thinking about is is that opening and closing scenes um and 
what really struck me is when we first meet him, right, and we first see his face, so we're watching him as he watches some brutality, violence that's happening off screen. So we don't see what he sees, but it's the first time that we see registering in his eyes and his face, mm -hmm. um, his, his response to violence. And then the closing scene, of course, you you make us watch, right? So now we we watch, we're not seeing so much his face, but we're watching now Daniel being both the victim of violence and taking part in violence. And then the final scene of his face, that final image, which I can't get out of my mind of, you know, there's blood on his face and his his eyes, you know, there's a, they're terrifying and they're terrorized. Um, and so I'm wondering um, if you would talk a little bit about the, the, the place, the meaning of violence for the story as a whole. And I'm thinking also about um, both why it is that you show us the violence at the end and not at the beginning, um, this, this sort of the threat of violence, right, that's, that's in, in the story throughout. And um, yeah, so maybe that's all I'll say now, but what, how, do, how do you see the place of, of violence in the, in the story? Yeah, well, you know, violence itself is, is, is a tool right now in, in, in cinema. And obviously it's all, most of films are filled with violence. And, but the way I sort of feel violence, the, the realness of it is, it's sort of like a social taboo. Like, um, like people tend to, especially, you know, researching streetwise characters, uh, but this environment for many, many years, because I was shooting a, a, a documentary about um, people um, in crime, like crime, you know, organized crime, etc. but especially young people in juvenile detention centers, etc. I realized that they're not happy with the violence because it's a disturbance in their lives. If they have to do it and they have to unfortunately perform it because they feel so or it's their obligation to do so they they decide to do it as quickly as possible mm -hmm. and which leads to another thing which is they're trying to move for, for the most of the time they're trying to find the right moment in time uh, in time to perform the violence and if they they do it they have to be they have to wait they their chances and they have to sort of um, be successful, uh, at least try calculate. It's a, it's the matter of calculation. So there's much more behind the violence than just the violence. There's there's the whole plan. There's the whole. It's, it's not a sport. It's the survival mode. And I think, you know, if so, the way I wanted to show the violence in Corpus Christi is sort of to show that it's very quick. It's intermittent during the storyline. You have just bits of it. And you know, if you take the whole film, the violence is, I would say, 2% of the film maybe, but the impression is longer, is, is bigger because when it's on, it's on. It happens, and, but you know, at, you know, usually street fighting, when I was talking with uh, these young criminals, usually street fighting would never take longer than 30 seconds. Like it's it's always so abrupt the the moment you you know burn knuckles and fight and all that you know th th this is the moment you realize it's totally it's totally not Hollywood it's the way it is it's like it's the survival mode and you have thirty seconds and you're on or you're just so I wanted to sort of give the impression of that in the film that it's it's really it's short it's quick. And I think also, you know, I think Scorsese, uh, Martin Scorsese understands it. And, and he, tell, he talked about violence many times. And he said one, uh, the way he remembered violence from Little Italy, when, when, which he was growing up in, in, in um, New York. And he said it was always quick and they were not sadists. They were trying to survive. So... Um, so it had to be quick, it had to be abrupt and sudden. It's like nobody's preparing for the violence. We're not waiting for the violence to amount. It's just hap it just happens, it's there 
and then it's gone. And we, I, everything goes back to normal, especially between these guys. So it's always shocking. It's a shocker. And the, the, the most shocking is when they get back to normal, normality. And you know, there's ob obviously the other side of the violence in the film, which is the communal violence, the violence we commit and we, we, um, uh, we commit on other people. We, 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 we do on daily basis with words and it, the pain is the same. I, I think like you have uh, people who are um, excluded from the community is the real pain on your brain. It's the, the pain of being labeled as, and you know, using not only slurs, but you feel the difference. You feel how people treat you differently, etc. So it's sort of, it's an echo. What, what we have in the village is the other type of violence, is the echo of the same violence we had in the at the juvenile detention center. So it's sort of, Unfortunately, and I, I think we in, in, in the community sense, especially when in many scenes we, we saw today and riots all over the world in Russia, we had, you know, this uh, scenes at the capital and uh, 6th of January, you know, the violence is like a currency people spend and they, the, it, it circulates in, this, in different societies through different worlds. It's, it's being incited by words uh, and then it happens, it's quick and then it's gone. And this, you, 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 I live in the area actually right now. I mean, right now in the former get Jewish ghetto area in Warsaw, it was here. It's not anymore. I can go to the store and I don't feel it, but it was here for a brief period of time in human history. It was just surrounding me. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, as you were speaking, I was thinking too of the, in the story, the violence of the accident, right? In, in which the seven people die and the ways in which um, the, the people speak about the accident. So even calling it an accident or calling it murder, right? So to your point about the language that we use to name violence. Yeah, of course, you know, you know just um, referring to um, the, the accident in the film, you're exactly right. It's either the accident or an attack or a deliberate attack on somebody else's life. And, you know, people play with death. They don't want to leave death to, to its own um, its incidentiality. They, they want to give some meaning to every death. So it's either a martyr, like the woman who died at the Capitol for, uh, for example, for right wing uh, people, for most extreme right wing, She's, she was a martyr for a lot of people from a different side of aisle she was an intruder to the ca the capital and she and for some other people it just it was just a sheer accident um, incited by fear of the policeman who had who just pulled the trig pulled the trigger because he didn't know what to do seeing hundreds of people you know trying to get in so it's you know you have so many sides of the of the it's, it's not only two sides of the coin you have so many sides of one coin and and for most of people they are true like they they create symbols they stick to them they make their own myths on them so you know having <laughs> accident in the village it's with six young people dying and the, the other person, the driver in the other car, it's, uh, it's the same thing. I saw it in my family. When my cousin died in a car crash, it was 20 years ago. Uh, he was, for some members of the family, was just an accident. For other members of the family, it was the, the, the fault of the other driver. And for um, some other members of the family, was it was his own fault because probably he was driving under influence or something. But you know the tests never showed it. But there's so something really, you know, so something was happening with his life prior to that, and he had issues, and it resulted in an accident. So we would never know the truth. And by that, I wanted to sort of show it into. In, in the film that truth 
it's sometimes it's uh, it's impossible to decipher the, the truth. And Daniel, in this last scene in which the the widow approaches Daniel and she says, "I something happened the, the day he died," and she tells him what happened. He realizes there is no truth. I mean, like it's it's impossible. Like there is truth, but for us, it's impossible to grasp it. And nobody really knows what happened on the road. So, um, so the only thing he can do is to just, you know, conduct the funeral. Yeah, and that the sense in which you know he we there's a there's a mm -hmm. issue there too of wanting to somehow not just the truth, but of uh, an idea of like responsibility, like somehow we can hold someone responsible. And with the accident, it's like you say, it's not possible. I mean, he knows through through Elisa that the, the, the kids were drinking. And then he learns from Eva that her husband was maybe wanting to, to kill himself or to do some sort of, and so yeah, this is this openness there. And then the way that Daniel, Daniel, um, Sort of navigates that right is is more through his action of 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 the funeral um, yes. and bringing her and allowing her to come back into the into the community mm -hmm. yeah. yeah totally well this is this is i i felt like he understood that you know somebody had to take the bullet and he decided to sacrifice himself because he knew what was like the funeral is like the torch like the, the gasoline is all over the place and the funeral will be the torch and he will be the first one to, to, to die <laughs> in the flames of the event. So, so he decided to become a victim of it, but in, in order to make the, com the, the community come together. And at the end it happens, sort of the miracle of bonding happens, but he's not there to witness it. Yeah. Right when Ava when Ava comes back into the church and Lydia gives yeah. her a little yeah. nod of, of acceptance. Yeah, yeah, it it takes this little nod sometimes, but for this little nod you have to you have to work for years. Right. Yeah. The nod from the community. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll, Yolanta, if it's okay, I'll ask one more question, and then Patrick, I know there's questions from the from the audience. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm just also dying to ask one question, but okay. I, I can wait. Okay. I'll ask one more, and then I'll. I'll okay. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So, so Jan, I, I'm I'm really curious to to talk a little bit about the 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 iconography, the 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 Catholic imagery. Um, and of course, the central one that's above the altar, this, this image of the, the Catholic crucifix. And, um, you know, just thinking about how in traditional Catholicism, this, this image, right, it's, it's, a, it's a male body and it's, it's exposed, it's, it's naked. Very often it's a brutalized body. So going back to this theme of, of violence, right? So you have this, this image that's actually quite, quite, contradictory right it's it's a violent image it's a dead body right yes. and, and for people who are not familiar with catholicism like this central image it's a dead body a dead male body that's exposed and so the the significance of course in in the film as a whole and i was so struck when we first see daniel naked is in the intimacy of making love with with uh, elisa Right, and then you sort of move us into this scene where he 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 reveals himself. He takes his shirt off, and so then his we're seeing his corpus, right? Not the yes. corpus Christi, but Daniel's corpus, Daniel's body. Um, and unlike the the figure behind him, of Daniel's body is alive. It's alive. It's vital. It's it's beautiful. It's um, and so the the contrast there. Um, so I, I'm I'm thinking about like the the the. The iconography, and then correlating with that, the 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 Catholic female iconography, right? So you show the the picture of the of the mother of Christ, right? So of of, of um, Maria, um, and then uh, I guess one of my questions, uh, I guess I have two questions. One is how you how you see this this gendered iconography in Catholicism, mm -hmm. um, how you see that correlating with the 
the women in the story and the men in the story, right? So the sense in which, so that would be my one question. Then the other one I'm really curious about, right after the scene where Daniel takes his shirt off in the church and we see his, his body, right after that, you, you show a series of images of the Madonna or the, the Maria yeah. figure. And you choose this little statue, which you show multiple forms of it. And I was so struck by the contrast with the Christ figure. So the Christ figure is really large and all of the female figures are quite small and they're kind of enclosed. They're enclosed in glass or these little, these little shrines. Um, so I've just, I guess, so I have two questions, how you see the, the correlation with the women characters mm -hmm. and the female iconography versus the men characters and the male iconography. And then how, what, what were you doing in showing the little, <laughs> the little statue? Like I was really struck by your, your choice to show those statues after Daniel um, reveals his, his own body. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, it's a great question. Um, actually, you know, it's super easy in, in a film like this, especially in, in a film that depicts the touches religion uh, to overdo things. And we were obviously we were proposed by um, set designers to put little crosses here and there to make you know, curtains look like cross, etc. Like we were not, like, stop it. Like it's so easy to overdo it. Like not, let's not go there. Like, so the iconography was, was I, we, I wanted to get to a point in the film where in which iconography makes itself, of, like in and of itself works. I don't have to push anything. Yes, we were shooting in the area in Poland, which is, <laughs> known to be very religious and conservative yes wherever you go you have little madonnas everywhere in you know people are using madonna like they are putting madonnas on their windows in their windows in their backyards every street corner there is a little madonna and it's like uh, you walk through this the, the village and you feel that this is part of their life, really. It's totally different from urban life I'm used to. I was like a stranger to that. Um, I felt like, a, we, we felt like like strangers in, in the world we didn't know. I was, by the way, just just uh, just to describe the feeling, I had to, I always envied English language speakers or Spanish language speakers that you have English language and you can go to different countries in, in let's say Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and they speak your language. Um, you have, we come from Spain, you go to Mexico, to Chile, and they speak same language. And with Polish, you, <laughs> there's no other country with Polish language. So it's basically, <laughs> So, um, so I had this impression for the first time in my life when I went down south. It was like a different country with different values, almost different type of religion, very local, and the same language. And I felt what it's like sort of to trust. So I was kind of trying to not to disturb it with my pushing directorial sort of trying to interconnect everything I see. I was kind of trying to, um, we had a lot more obviously of the footage of the village and, and the Jesuses and crosses <clears throat> and, and all that. There was, even, uh, there was even this statue, I don't know if you noticed um, that just in front of the church, there's the statue of Jean Paul II. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, and, uh, and there's this, we, we made even, there's this little, um, Mm, uh, sign close to the main road we filmed it we haven't used it because it was too much but there were so many like there was this sign that um, that Jean Paul II before he was Jean Paul II was passing through the village that was neighboring this village for 15 minutes mm. so it was like 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 that was the all that that was the closest there they've been to Jean Paul II before he became a pope so that's that's the state of you know I, we have we had to sort of 
respect it totally. And I, I just, I decided to um, just be as respect, uh, respectful as possible, but not to be on my knees when I was thinking, like not to also to, to overdo my risk, like sort of, I, I was trying to be reasonable with, with everything I, I, I see and, and then film. So um, when we get to filming, we had a lot of different decisions <laughs> to be made on set and iconography in terms of, um, I, it wasn't in the script and it wasn't planned. But then I realized that the, the cross image of, of Jesus in church is basically the symbol of a victim of violence. We have a person on the cross who is dying or who died and has a wound uh, and, you know, bloody wound. And it's what can be more violent than that? And as sort of, sort of like as a remedy for it, for the amount, like the tremendous amount of suffering embodied by this, this, this symbol, as a remedy for it, there were twice or three times as many Marias everywhere mm -hmm. because it was something that mm, you, you, you could visit church uh, and then see the, G, the Jesus statue. But then you went out going about your daily errands and you would see uh, like Marias out there in, in the street. So mm -hmm. church once, once a week, it was meant to be, you know, to be, it was like a spring for you to go up to something, like to be shaken by the violent act that's embodied in front of you. And then if you want to le live on daily basis, you were looking more for soothing, I would say. So that was, that was the, Maria was like one for like for, um, for us to just go on, to move on. Jesus is when we need a shake-up. Every week we need some kind of a shake-up and saying sort of memento mori, like remember about the death, remember where we all will be going to. <clears throat> so, uh, so that was definitely one thing. The other thing is um, this is a village and basically, basically this whole area is an area full of mothers and grandmothers, basically. And it was so much, so much in, in echoing the, the emotionality, even the sexuality of, of behavior of, of, of uh, villagers, because they were mostly women, uh, because men don't last long enough, especially if they drink a lot of alcohol. <laughs> so it's uh, it's mostly women, and they're mostly abandoned by their uh, by their kids or grandchildren because all of the grandchildren and kids are in the cities. So cities and urban areas are the ones who devour your your children, and they take away your children. So that's why you're you're being sort of, you're being rejected from the overall society by staying in this area, right? So um, I would say it's like the first thing, the, the first, that was also production wise. Uh, the first thing we did was to go to this country club for women. It was the only, like it was the only club in the village and we knew this is where you wield power over the village. Like if you want to manage anything in the village, you want to get something done, first you contact strongest women, which are grandma, which is grandmothers, seven, eight of them. They are the country club. Um, but at the same time, everybody knows they are the true muscle in the village. So the the mayor doesn't count at all. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny, but it's true. It works that way. And you know, woman has a say, a saying. You know, maybe it's very close to Roman culture, basically, or or uh, Latin culture. Woman, madre, uh, mother uh, is saint, and 
Maria embodies the sanctity of the mother. And yeah, and they are saying, if they like what you do, if you respect them, you can shoot in the village. If you don't, then you better pack your things because my cousins, my sons will be after you. So it was kind of Southern Gothic. There, there, there was the sense of Southern Gothic, <laughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, thank you. Well, Yolanta, why don't you ask your question and then um, Patrick, I'm sure there's there's questions. Yeah, from I have about uh, 20 questions, but I will ask, just ask one because people are waiting um, to ask you questions about the characters and um, this is something like came uh, last to me uh, about the characters that each of the characters are in trauma, very traumatic um, experience. All, all, of, all of the characters, except for uh, the um, priest, uh, the main priest, Tomasz, and maybe even the priest um, in the church and maybe Daniel. So if I would like save your film from the Catholic, uh, you know, anti-Catholic anti groups, I would say there are three Catholics in the uh, movie who are positive characters and they know their paths. How would you just, what would you say to what I say? <clears throat> yeah. Well definitely the trauma factor in the film is part of the like the, I would say the design of the the, 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 um, the symbolic pool I decided to sort of um, carve out at the beginning when we started the process of, of making the film so the trauma obviously the main character carries the trauma with with him because in him because he um he committed a crime in the past and he brought death so to somebody else he wasn't pro he was a kid then but it's totally it we're in a society that doesn't we're in a society that doesn't forgive right and forget so he is it's over for for people like him so he enters uh, adulthood with literally close to zero chances to make it not many people make it from the juvenile detention centers some people do especially I've, but you know you did documentary on that right yeah it's it's the whole yeah. documentary i i was working on a documentary about it so for many years i'm i'm cooperating with some juvenile detention facilities um, uh, here in Poland. So it's usually they, these guys don't, these guys and girls, it's so hard for them to make it in the society. Um, and actually it's also because of what, what they do to themselves. They punish themselves and it's, an, it's a vicious cycle of being, a, of, of victimizing yourself for what you did. And it's, it's even much more harmful than like, it's, it's obviously the, the, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough issue. I, I'm not, I, I'm just, yeah, the, 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 I, I was the, just an observer, the, right? The but priest in the detention center is a character that doesn't change in my opinion. That's the thing. So, so he basically he carries a trauma. The only thing that, it, but at, but for this film, the, his trauma of being a murderer, because once you're murdered, but then you are a murderer, and it's a trauma on you. Like you're gonna carry the burden with you. So that is becomes sort of his secret superpower in a very um, tricky oh. way because he broke every of every each of 10 commandments right so he he was there he was everywhere already so and the, at the confessional if people approach him who can uh out sin daniel nobody like he did everything so he's more like a he uh he he's more like a like a um yeah, he's, he has this sort of, that's why probably uh, the trick in the film that, that's provoking is this guy can help other people because he 
he did everything that's um you know that's not allowed um he did everything already so he's able to find power to do something so they don't follow his steps they don't know about it he knows and the difference in their knowledge is his superpower it makes him it I empowers. Don't see it in the film like his character is very pure in my opinion but it's just my perception yeah well he he's certainly he's suffering from what he did it's very i didn't want to make a film out front about redemption i, I, I understand about redeeming yourself oneself but it's there anyway it's there and he carries it with him and by the end of the film he just loses it because he he loses it and he almost kills the other person again in his life it's sort of like an act of succumbing to the label you you labeled me a murderer you wanted me to become a murderer here i am i'm i'm going full like i'm 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 i'm, I'm a murderer you you wanted yeah, i got it i'm going to be one okay, now. so in other Consciously. words everyone is in trauma in the film there's no one character yeah, I, I think it's it's um, I think it's the matter of the scope of the film. I, I totally envision somebody taking their camera, a filmmaker with their uh, with their subject, going to the same village and making a comedy, which actually happened before us. There was a comedy shot by uh, I don't know if you know that Yolanta uh, <laughs> by uh, Darius Jabłoński. Oh yeah, That's I do. Cool. Yeah. Oh. Vino Truskavko. It's the comedy from yes. like 15 years ago. It was at the village. So it depends on the, oh so, so it depends on the lenses and the scope and the subject. If the subject like sort of subject is like a, I would say like a light bulb. It just the color of the light bulb attracts a certain uh, moths, you know, or butterflies yeah. or whatever. So this these are the, the moths we attracted. Like we attracted trauma moths trauma and thank you so much but i think people are waiting and i sure. took the time oh my god i always do that <laughs> feel guilty um okay so uh patrick yeah um if you'd like question. to submit your question like anonymously you can also private oh, message me i don't see anyone's hand raised but i do have a question if there's no question no, there are many questions oh there about, yeah. yeah people ask so many questions I, I'm there, just, were, there were ones that were emailed patrick did you God, did i got so many or? questions yeah i mean i can break uh, can you see uh patricia no. do you see questions i i have the ones that you emailed to me okay could you Lovely. please uh, uh read the question and then we reply um okay so so yeah i'm reading um questions that people email. So uh, this one question, I want to ask you about the women in the film, uh, specifically the characters of Lydia and Elisa. Lydia is the power center of the church. It is she, just by a nod, who decides entry into the church. Her daughter, Elisa, is the catalyst for Daniel's and the town's redemption. Elisa is the one to help him reach out to the grieving parents. Can we see the development of intimacy between Elisa and Daniel as the ultimate act of grace and forgiveness? Wow. Um, that's great. That's a tough one. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful question. Thank you. Um, I think, you know, I think that Eliza's ca character, uh, she's Martha in the film. Martha's character is um, is like like truth and purity. She's somebody who knows where the real wound, wound in the society, in the community is, and she knows that nobody will help Daniel find it. Uh, and she is the only one maybe to heal the society. She can do it herself. But since he's, he's a newcomer, maybe she will just, you know, 
push him a little bit, usher him in um, to let him know about where the hot spots are in the village, where the where the real evil is taking place. And he does it. She, she's everywhere there in the film in which someone has to push the storyline further because she's the one to sort of take his hand and, you know, um, make, make his hand touch uh, the, the, the place in the, the, the place that hurts. And, and he does it, he, she follows her. So he, she's basically Ariadna from Greek mythology. She sort of like, come, I'm going to show you the, the, the way. She's the one in the church in the first place he, he meets. So he's sort of, he's ushered in thanks to her. Uh, she's like a calling. So yeah, she has a mythical, if I can say that to a certain degree. And we talked about it a lot with, with the whole, with, with my cinematographer, with Bartosz, with Eliza, the, the character. She has this mythical um, um, role in the film, which for an actress, is the worst thing because how can she play <laughs> well they, they have this real life full-fledged you know characters and fleshy and bloody and they are all living and she has to be somebody who ushers in it's like it's nothing but you know she has so much like off on her own she has so much purity and so it was just beautiful and she she never complained about it she loved it she embraced it. She came to the village um, like oh, two weeks before the shooting. She was helping sisters, nuns, and because nuns were helping and to clean the church every day. So she was helping them. She was connecting with the locals. She, it's like after a few days, she, she knew a lot about what was really going on. So it helped her create the role. But yeah, that's the thing. Like she was the uh, coming back to the question. She was, uh, she was, um, she had this very specific role in the film. While her mother had a position of power, and she was e even oh, like she somebody she she was un her mother is untouchable. Basically, she lost her son in the accident, so she's saint. She's almost, and she can also, she almost runs um, daily mem memorial, uh, memorials closer to, close to this, um, uh, to this board with, with pictures, uh, daily prayers, night prayers and all that. So she's almost like a, like a female version of the priest. Mm -hmm. So her mother wields power and mayor, like he, <laughs> he's afraid of anybody <laughs> like he just he's like uh someone said biblical Nero who only cares for status quo and he just wants to keep it so he hates um that the boat starts to rock when the new when the when the when the strangers a uh, stranger appears in town and starts to ask um, painful questions so, you know, here, so I, we, I was basically working a lot on this, <laughs> I would say, uh, triangle of power in the film, like the, the energy had to flow um, in, 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 and having somebody who is an outcast and then, you know, retrieved into society again, into community. Um, I think these are all mythical figures in a way, in, in a way but you know, be, being somebody who is good is so tough. So, so Eliza had it uh, toughest. And then she leaves. I mean, that's how you end her story. We see her leaving. So that's yeah. interesting, a, a opening yeah. up maybe possibilities yeah. for her. That I yeah. Think yeah. So many yeah. questions. Yes. And and to be to be honest, which which is funny, perceptionally, she, she's like, I don't know of your perceptions, guys, but I'm actually I'm interested in those. Def, super interested because she doesn't know she is 
sleeping by the end of the film with uh, a fake priest. For her, it's still a priest. Weird one. Maybe intuitively, she feels something is wrong with him. Definitely, she feels she she's she's smart, but she, you know, he's still a priest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. May so so you know so so for her, it's a trespass, like it's a trespass of everything her mother was believing in. Also, like it's complete break of rules okay. for her. Yeah, I hate to say it, but we have a few more questions. Yeah, but yeah. Can I read more? Or do, Patrick, do you have some now or should I keep reading? I have I have a question. Okay, good. Okay, go ahead. I uh, have a question okay. about the boat. So many questions. Oh, like oh, wait. Okay. I, I have yeah. a question about the boat washed up on shore. It's like <laughs> out of like Fitzcarraldo. Um, I'm expecting like Werner Herzog crawling oh, over it with yeah. the with the camera um is there is there a story with the boat is there there's is there like some huh? some tale about it it's it's amazing and i was we were flabbergasted when we saw it we were uh, doing we were on locations scouting looking for different places and originally in this initially in the script it was ruins like the the youth of the town okay. was spending their their, you know, spare time and uh, somewhere in the ruins, like, you know, young people do graffiti, ruins, etc. It was the most basic you can you could think of. And then we, during the locate, like when we are on location, we we're, you know, sniffing around, and somebody t so said, well, why don't they go to the lake? And I said, well, we are in mountains, so. Yeah, maybe there are some lakes, but you know the water, you know the yeah. I let let me show, show the water reservoir. I well, let me show you. And they took us, and then there was this boat. Like who uses this boat? It's like it's 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 it's, it's on the shore. It's it doesn't function. It was used. We learned it was used for. It was used to build. Uh, um, a church on on one of the shores and they couldn't get through the land so they had to build a boat and then when the church was built already in some other type it was 60 kilometers from this village but the impression is in the film that it's close by because there are hills everywhere so <clears throat> so they were using the boat and when it's not functioning for like now it's not functional for, for like 30 years she's she's a, she's just standing there um, on cement pillars then it's just like a abstract like a totally total as you said Fitzcarraldo ship in um, or you know from Fellini film like totally ab abstract and I thought it would be in the most disturbed way weirdly poetic maybe maybe to have a boat that doesn't swim. And then we obviously tried to implement it somewhere in the background that something that should function doesn't function at all. So you have a society as a community that doesn't function the way it's supposed, supposed to, the boat that doesn't swim. And something we, uh, I can tell you because you know, but something that doesn't work in the film because it's not seen, but during the, there's this festivities, there are these festivities after the Corpus Christi procession, people gather around, you know, Elisa, Ma Martha is singing it on stage. And in the background, there's, <laughs> there's this balloon that doesn't work as, as well. It's just, it's a huge balloon. And I, I had this image in my head, I have to have the balloon. And the producer said, why? You know, it's not even on screen. I had to have it. It doesn't, it's the balloon that doesn't fly. Like in this village, you have things that don't work. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it's, you know, you can't see the balloon. We would have to make a, a, a total shot. We didn't have time for it, but the balloon is there, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. So Yolanta, do we have time for me to read another question? I, I think there are people that would like to ask questions. I have million questions, uh, but- um, well, yeah. I have more from the email, so if-, yeah. if I, I know his email address, I can ask questions directly, but- um, Should I read another? 
Yes, please. Let you know. Yes, okay. Um, okay, so another question. Um, control is a major theme in the movie. Control to access for forgiveness by the church, control over resources and wealth in the town by the sawmill owner. Is that what inspires Daniel to make everyone at the factory blessing kneel in the mud, his chance to call the shots? Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's a, it gets harder with every question. <laughs> I don't know the question. Is it the question? What is the question? I mean, um, uh, it's, it's uh, definitely. Jan is better, right? Well, de well, definitely it's, especially in that scene, this is, um, I was, we had, basically we had a, you know, a friend who was helping us, he was a, he was a priest and he was accompanying us um, every time we were shooting a mass or a ceremony, you know, for us to have somebody like a consultant from church. So he, he, he's a friend, we love him. And this is the only moment he said, well, this is the narcissistic moment of, of Daniel because he's using, um, you know, the blessing to, you know, to, to you know, to, um, you know, say a sermon, uh, the blessing of sermon, he uses it for his own personal purpose, sort of to humiliate um, mayor. And it's somewhere in between. I'm not sure where is it like for you guys, but for me, it's somewhere in between. It might be this, but it's also might be like Daniel is also kneeling down in the mud. So he's like, I'm going there with you. So symbolically, he might be probably, and people were always laughing when the scene happened, which is fine because it's, you know, it's the way it's shot and, and we played it that way and we edited. But still, it's sort of like we, um, okay, maybe I have something against you, but still we're, uh, to the same extent erratic in our daily um, behavior and what we represent and I'm not more or less erratic than you are you just you're just maybe a little less willing um, willing to admit it but let's do it together so I would say it's a power play definitely yeah, but but da thanks to Daniel's performance uh, he no, he brings it to the so he levels it down like he makes it even for everybody mm -hmm. yeah thank you um okay uh another question um maybe last question <laughs> last one okay um well maybe this is kind of a, a big one but <laughs> so uh it says um the setting of the film is a small rural town strangers are considered suspicious it reminded me of Jerzy Kozinski's The Painted Bird, where oh. the white roams through a landscape that overwhelms the reader with their vicious and cruel villagers, where there are literary references that also influenced um, the movie. Oops. Jan? Oops. Yeah, well, literally, oh my God. definitely, well, someone, to be honest, Jerzy yes, Kozinski was brought at least a couple of times when we were in Toronto, I remember wow. uh, when we were in Toronto at Toronto Film Festival, I remember this situation. I, it was not me, it was mm -hmm. the, the woman, um, somebody like it was a woman approached the scriptwriter and she said, well, thank you. Thank you for this. After the film screened, thank you for this film because for the first time I saw a film that talks beautifully about Catholic church, about community, finally a film about faith that doesn't dis disparages it, that doesn't belittles people of faith, etc. Thank you for it. And she, and then there was this other person right after her approaching the scriptwriter, and he said, Thank you for the for, for this film. For the first time I saw the film that finally showed the corruption of Catholic Church. Uh -huh. And, oh. you know, <laughs> it was great. You did it without overdoing things. You stated as it is. It's corrupt. It's like, so, you know, there were so many interpretations of 
mm-hmm. the, like some people talked about um, the how uh, the the crit like the film is a crit critique of uh, a community based on the is fueled by some type of religion, religiousness, um, vindictive and and you know hierarchical and unfair for some and some other people saw it totally differently um and yeah Jerzy Koszynski was brought his name was brought up a few times um but we were uh, we were um I was film wise I was inspired by Andrei Zwiagintsev Leviathan Mm -hmm. um it's a it's a great for those of you who haven't seen it please see it it's a great film Russian film from I believe from a few it's like it was five, six, seven years ago, maybe. Uh, it was nominated to Oscar. He um, he told a, a beautiful story in the village in rural Siberia, somewhere in Russia, and the the power constellation within the village, the, like sort of like in a like in a closed circle. Uh, about the, the guilt and hurt and unfairness and the community that mm, punishes the vulnerable, um, etc. It's all there and the dynamics of it. I think I was inspired by it so much. I even reached out to the composer of Andrei Zvegintsev. Uh, the composer's name is Yevgeny Galperin, and he set in um, in in uh, France at the moment and since it's a polish french co-production it worked so uh, evgeny galperin um, composed the music for our film okay. and so there is this this soul maybe a little bit like a echo of andres vegins works um so that was one of one of uh, definitely um, one of our inspirations um in terms of literally inspirations, um, we, I, uh, one of my inspirations was uh, the Russian uh, Russian play uh, by um, Gogol. It's called um, I don't know what the English title. I'm gonna check it. Just uh, uh, it's called Revisor in Polish. Uh, uh, Nikolai Gogol, Revisor. Inspector General. Inspector General, thank you. And you know, it's also in the countryside. For those of you that don't know, don't know, a stranger comes to town yes, and right. he has a fake identity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that was my something. I, I, I basically I, I, I admire literal uh, like Russian literature. So I, I, I read a lot about it. Obviously, Dead Souls also. Um, that that sort of that sort of spectrum, that realm, um, symbolically, and and with I tried to embody the force of it, of that sort of community and how it's there. Um, and uh, I would say a little bit. I was inspired by Breaking the Waves by Lars von Trier. Also rural community, also strong religious, um, you know, uh, stigma on the on the main character imposed on the upon the main character because she um, she lives not by their rules but by her own naive naive and maybe pure rules. Of on her own, so breaking the waves definitely, and there were some uh, some other uh, smaller uh, sm- smaller uh, inspirations. All right. Well, well, thank you so much, Jan. Um, I just want to say thank you to all um, who came here tonight, and if you're interested in hearing more from Jan about the film and the filmmaking process, uh, check out the Carnegie Mellon Film Festival podcast. Uh, Jan and I did a fantastic interview before this, uh, which builds on the film. And we talk about um, 
a myriad of things. Um, video games. Video yeah. Games. I'll, I'll talk about video games. <laughs> um, also, uh, please be on the lookout for a survey regarding tonight's event in the coming days. Your responses help us make improvements for future films in our virtual format. You'll also have the option to participate in a raffle to win a festival t-shirt, poster, or two tickets to our next virtual screening. Corpus Christi will be available for viewing until tomorrow, January the 29th. And if you have not seen it yet or want to view it after today's discussion, if you have not seen it yet or want to view it after today's discussion. Again, thank you guys for joining us and we hope to see you again at future events. Yeah, thank you so much, Jan. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, yes, everybody. Thank you, thank you, Jan. Thank you very much. Very good thank discussion. You. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Thanks. Was, oh, thank you, beautiful, Patricia. Thank beautiful you. film. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Patrick and Patricia. Thank you. Welcome, Jan. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you so much, Jan. And thanks, Yolanta. Oh, thank you so much.